Finding Dory was the second part in the Finding Nemo saga. What could be the third piece to this franchise? I think it's Finding Coral, Nemo's mom. You're probably thinking she died at the start. She ain't coming back. Well, you know what? Those kids aren't coming back. The Nemo's brothers and sisters, they're all dead. But, but Coral, there's a chance for Coral. How? How, you ask? Well, it's quite simple. If he is just a dumb predator, perhaps he just gobbled her up in one go and swallowed her whole. And then he had some bad indigestion. Because, you know, those babies taste horrible. I mean, have you ate a baby? P probably not, but believe me, they're horrible. They taste horrible. Ah, oh. so, supposing she's alive, we could delve into the past, how Marlin and Coral got together, how Nemo came into the world, how the relationship started. You know what's always been on my mind? What's always been bothering me? Why these are the only clownfish we ever see. Perhaps they left a kingdom of clownfish. Yeah, I know, it sounds silly, but these films don't follow the freaking scientific shit anyway, I mean, y you know what happens with clownfish, right? The life cycle, they... Males become females, they can change their sex. Or so I've heard. Anyway, so... Say they left. You know, they got this Romeo and Juliet feel. It's cute. But... Perhaps there's more to it. Perhaps there is a dark secret, a dark truth to all of this. Nemo is Finn. It's always bothered me. It's small. And let's be fair, Nemo's he's not he's not the brightest lad. He's not the brightest lad in class. Ha, huh, lol, I touched the butt. <laughs> Almost got himself killed. He's not very smart, is he? Not very smart, no. So this this leads me to think there's more to it. Coral and Marlin, they're very close. Yeah, yeah, they're in a relationship, and you, you always are close when you're in a relationship, but they seem too familiar, too playful, too naughty. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I said that. I think there's more to it. There's definitely more to it. Perhaps, perhaps they didn't leave their kingdom. Perhaps they were banished. Possibly for the same reasons. Perhaps... They had a forbidden love. Wow. Oh my gosh. That explains it. Nemo's deformity. His brain. How come these two are so familiar? Why there's no other clownfish? They didn't come from two separate families. Nemo's parents. They were banished because they are brother and sister, or cousins. Nemo is an inbred. Finding Coral was the third upload on the Harry Bruce TV YouTube channel. And right now it has just over 52,000 views. I'd like to say thank you to anyone who has taken an interest, shown some appreciation and support for this video. Thank you. The video has received love. It has received hate. However, I believe these people are putting forward too much emotion for what is actually a joke. The video is wrong. See, after three years, I have realized that Coral was not eaten and pooped out or vomited out. There is a darker truth than what I put forward in that video. And I'm going to talk about it, right now. The opening of Finding Nemo is awfully suspicious. Marlin and Coral talk about their happy lives together and inspect the children just under their home. Then Coral goes out all of a sudden and there's a barracuda. Now, Marlin notices this and he's freaking out. Coral, her expression, 
At first viewing, you may think Coral is worried, and she's actually taking this very seriously. She's putting a stance towards the Barracuda. She wants to swim to the children and protect them. However, I think this is false, and I think her true intentions are a bit more dastardly. Dick. Now, Marlin can't see her face. Perhaps these facial expressions are to the Barracuda. They are signaling. They are a communication. She swims down, the Barracuda swims in, and knocks Marlin unconscious. I believe this was a plan. The Barracuda and Coral were on a mission to save the children. Here is what I believe is canon. After Marlin and Coral retreated, escaped from the Clownfish Kingdom that I mentioned in part one, they had this little home together and they were all playful and everything at the start, yes. However, I think Coral soon realised what was going on. Marlin is obviously an older guy. Yeah, definitely an older guy. Maybe not so much older, but I mean, come on, they have such different takes on the same personality. I believe Marlin is actually a little bit of a, uh, well, a bit of a pedophile, but that's beside the point. I believe Coral came to a realization that this was just a fling. This was a mistake. She rushed into this relationship and it's blown up in her face. I believe she tried to explain this to Marlin, that maybe this wasn't meant to be. However, Marlin got a little bit aggressive, and then Coral had no choice but to stay. She was forced, she was abused into this relationship. I don't want to say whether or not she was forced to have children with Marlin, but that could have very well been the case. Anyway, the eggs have been laid. Coral, she doesn't want to raise these children with Marlin. She does not want to put these children through hell. As far as she knows, Marlin is a deranged old fish who's abusive. If not physically, definitely emotionally. He plays this stance as if he's the submissive one in the relationship. No, I believe he acts that way. It's just a front when he really wants the control. How's about this for a plot? One morning, Carl says to Marlin, I'm just gonna go for a little swim, a little morning swim, a bit cardio. She goes into the dark neighborhood and she meets up with this barracuda. If you help me and my children get out of that hellhole and get us to the Clownfish Kingdom, I can guarantee you treasures. I can guarantee you that the Clownfish Kingdom will take you in with open arms and protect you. And if you don't wanna come in, we'll still protect you. That's what I think it was. I think it was a protection for protection type deal. See, I've not noticed any currency in the uh, fish world. Not like in Shark Tale, where they had the pearls and all. Why ain't I talking about Shark Tale? Why am I talking about Finding Nemo? So they go forth with this plan to get out of there. Marlin is knocked out. They don't know when he will wake up, so they're in a rush. That's why they left the one egg. They just missed it, or forgot about it, or didn't have time to grab the egg. They had to get out of there as quick as possible. How did they transport the eggs? Well, they just... They're still in the Barracuda's mouth, but they were careful, okay? Before I get some comments saying how the hell would they transport them, they ain't got a shopping trolley or a shopping cart. Shut up. They get back to the Clownfish Kingdom. Coral explains that she made a mistake. She's brought the children that she had made with Marlin. So what do we know? Well, we know that Coral and the Barracuda staged homicide and kidnapped a group of children. We also know that Nemo is in fact an inbred. We're not going to denounce that theory because, well, it's, it's, it's plain and obvious. And a new discovery. Marlin is quite possibly an abusive, egotistical maniac. Quite possibly a pedophile and rapist. The Finding Coral videos on this channel are the most successful videos I've ever made. I must say a big thank you to everyone who's given them a chance. But, I'd be lying if I said I was 100% satisfied. What we've started has so much potential, and I think it's time we unearth that potential. We are going deeper than we've ever gone before. This is the darkest it's ever been. In late 2022, I began working on something huge. The greatest project I'd ever set myself. Something that would incorporate all my skills, hobbies, interests. I began finding core. The series. Yes, what you're seeing is real. I know it doesn't look like much, 
It's the first time I've ever worked on anything like this. But this is what I've been doing for the last year. I was getting into a writing phase about a year and a half ago. From there, I drew all these characters, redeveloped their personalities, painted the backgrounds, even worked on some musical elements like the intro theme. That's some good ass fucking shit. But it's not just me involved. I have a handful of my friends who will be voicing the characters with me, bringing them to life. I was hoping to get this all done by October 2023 and start uploading, but I guess I've underestimated the size of this project. Going off script here, you can probably understand that I'm attached to this project. At first it was just a, a test. I wanted to edit something, to write something, create something, and I wanted to get the experience, learn something. And it has been a passion project and I want it to do okay. Look, wait for the first episode. If you like it, you like it. If not, bloody you, bloody you, bastard bitch. I've got so much done and ready so far. Hopefully this goes well. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, if you have anything to say, leave it in the comment section. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hopefully this all goes according to plan. Otherwise, you'll hear from me maybe in another couple years with some other stupid idea. Thank you.